Hello, this is Storybooks channel. New videos are posted every day. Subscribe and click the bell. Good morning. A young, beautiful girl entered the office with a hip gait. The whole space was immediately filled with the scent of her fresh citrus perfume and her long silk hair. A waterfall was building down her back. She flipped her curls gracefully to the side, adjusting her short, dark green dress. You were expecting me. Well, ladies come through. The young man looked up blankly. With one hand, he corrected the edge of the collar, shirt, the other pointed to the small partition. Undress, lie down on the couch. The girl sparkled her eyes playfully. Just like that at once she giggled, twisting a lock of hair with her finger. Well, since you insist. The man raised one eyebrow at the lady. How could it be otherwise? I can give you a massage. He shook his head dismissively pass. Rather not be delayed. Yes. The girl rolled her eyes and walked behind the thing. Does he really not realize what an idiot he is? She lamented to herself. Maybe he's just pretending. Lucy was a regular client of this masseur. The man was a private practitioner, that is, he was self-employed. He rented a small studio by himself, from which he set up a private massage parlor, where he was the only employee. Lucy sometimes scolded herself for coming to the sessions too often. The pleasure was too expensive. However, she could not give up this business. Nick is the name of the masseur was not only a good specialist, but also an insanely handsome man. He is tall and clean-shaven, thick brown and his hair was slightly tussled. Bright green eyes transmitted in the sun. Lucy often felt that by looking into them, she was magically transported into a lush green forest. And what kind of hands did he have? Strong, beautiful, neat, and at the same time incredibly masculine. Lucy loved not only getting a massage from those hands, she loved just looking at them. Dainty wrists, long fingers, always neat nails. Not a man. A dream. As you can guess, Lucy was head over heels in love with her masseur. Night, she dreamed of those strong hands squeezing her in the quiet of her bedroom, of Nick getting greedily drunk with hot kisses on her thin and fair skin. Alas, these were only the dreams and fantasies of a young girl with a rich imagination. Lucy had always been strikingly beautiful and charming. She had never needed male attention. What was her surprise when she discovered that not everyone was head over heels for her beauty? To be more accurate, it was Nick who didn't lose his head. No matter how hard she pouted, no matter how much makeup she put on, it was all for nothing. Nick looked at her the same way he looked out the window, or in his notebook. The same way he looked at his watch, guessed the time, the same way he looked at his cell phone screen. He looked at her without a drop of interest, without a hint of any attraction on his part. Maybe he thought to himself Lucy, grasping her forehead in amazement. A hunch struck her in the heart. What if he likes men? With longing thought the girl Olia, in her hands already removed her dress. Lucy, you're all right. Nick's slightly agitated voice was heard. Probably the girl had spent a long time in the locker room. Buried in her own thoughts, she had completely lost track of time, which made her masseur a little nervous. Do you feel bad? He asked. No, no, Lucy replied. Spreading her shoulders, she was pulled from the disposable robe, but abruptly stopped her hand halfway. It's now or never. The girl thought to herself and made the decision to go out to the man completely naked. Well, if he's into boys, I'll know it right away, Lucy thought. And after examining her body from head to toe, she took a confident step out of the partition. Nick stood with his back to her. He spread the fingers of his hands and never turned around to look at his client. Please lie down badly hiding his displeasure, he said. I have clients after you. Don't waste your time, please. Lucy, still completely naked, felt more stupid than ever. In her head, this performance looked completely different. The girl was waiting for the subject of her you breath. Well, at least look in her direction. She cleared her throat. Nick, no longer hiding his irritation, barked at her. The man turned around sharply and, embarrassed, turned away again. Lucy, you forgot to put on your robe, Nick hissed coldly. What's the matter with you today? Lucy rolled her eyes again, but now, she thought, so hard that she could see herself from the inside out. Look at me, 
shouted the offended girl in utter despair. Are you naked? replied Nick Obvious. You know the customers wear a robe when they come out. What else? The man did not have time to finish. Neat footsteps were heard behind him. Lucy approached him with her whole body, pressing against the man. The man frightenedly sent so, and did not want to look at his clientele. What's the matter? She asked irritably. Don't you like me? No, Nick exclaimed confidently. Are you my client? So what? You're your own boss. Parried the girl, slowly approaching the man, as a hunter approaches his prey. Sneakily quiet, but at least look at me already. Nick didn't think of giving up. He continued to move around the office, having no desire to look at or even touch his client. Lucy put it on immediately angrily. He reprimanded her. Trying to reason with her, are you one of those? Yes. Quietly asked Lucy, having already abandoned any attempt to get closer. I won't tell anyone. Nick froze, then slowly turned around. Hope settled in the girl's chest. I think he's got it, she thought. When their gazes crossed, Lucy squared her shoulders confidently and smiled predatorily. How do you like me? She asked. For a few seconds, the master stared at the girl uninterruptedly, then finally answered looking the client directly in the eyes. Nothing, Lucy. You are completely indifferent to me, he said rudely and quickly went towards the locker room, grabbing a disposable robe and stepping out from behind the partition. He threw the robe at the all-long girl. Get dressed. You're definitely one of those. Affirmatively stretched out Lucy and reluctantly pulled the robe over herself. How much time do I have left for the massage? No, not one of those, answered Nick. I'm married. Lucy, married. Lucy's eyes rounded in surprise. So what? She asked. Tied the thin belt of his robe around himself. Lucy really didn't understand how the fact that the man she liked was already married could interfere with their future relationship. She'd had far more than one married lover in her entire life. None of them had ever been embarrassed by the presence of a spouse. The girl's eyes lit up again. She stepped forward and we won't tell her. No, shouted Nick. I only love my wife and I only like her. Get your hands off me, he bellowed. Lucy abruptly stopped coquettishly and the light went out and instead a veritable fire of rage lit up. She became more than a little furious and shouted, fuck you. She went back to the dressing room and put on her dress and jumped out of the office in a hurry. Will you regret it? She shouted one last time and disappeared out the door. The man said quietly. He looked around the room wistfully, then ruffled his thick hair and thought. Lucy was one of Nick's main customers. Be that as it may, Nick didn't want to lose a regular customer. Yes, and Lucy was quite a nice girl, quiet, neat, clean. She was always satisfied with the massage she received and even often left a few bills in addition for tea. As the girl herself said, of course, to lose such a client did not want to. But what was the right thing to do? Nick was lost in his own thoughts. Nick had always been a good decent man. The man knew about the fact that nature awarded him with incredible and enchanting beauty since early childhood. His family, relatives, friends of his parents all, and always did not forget. Reminding the child just how beautiful he was. Nick's mother even wanted to send her son into modeling. But the boy's father was categorically against it. This is not a man's business, he said. Nick himself and his beauty has never seen anything positive. There are not many beautiful people in this world. So what? His father gave him a harsh upbringing, built on the fact that a man is first and foremost a provider and beauty is for women. A man should be a little prettier than a monkey. Nick grew up and became more and more attractive, and other people paid more and more attention to him. Nick himself never noticed it. Even when at the age of 18 Nick was invited to the casting of a famous TV series, he refused. He knew for sure that his father would be categorically against it. Dad was a real authority for Nick. He was for him an example of his teacher, mentor. Mom, in turn, did not give up trying to instruct her son on a different path. Secretly from his father, she continued to insist that Nick began to monetize his appearance. She picked up castings, ordered photo shoots, dreamed that her son entered the acting school, but all in vain. 
the only authority for the boy remained his father. Nick followed him through life, confidently, without lowering his gaze and all his values he adopted from his father. People around him were often surprised when they learned that Nick was into hunting and fishing, not yoga or fashion. His appearance didn't match with such hobbies. Seeing a guy with plump lips and thick, long eyelashes, people thought he was a model rather than a hunter. Nick Rose was growing manly stronger. He was still incredibly handsome, but the teenage tenderness had been superseded by a rough masculine beauty. On his father's advice, Nick enrolled in a sports college, a real man's profession. After successfully entering the university, his father set his son's next goal to marry a good decent girl. Of course, Nick had a lot of admirers, but so far it was all wrong. The father expressed clear criteria for the future daughter-in-law, educated, pretty, modest. Nick never gave up trying to find his soulmate, but nothing. All the girls that appeared on the way of this handsome man, he did not suit him at all. Nick went to school, got a job. He got older and wiser, but no suitable bride appeared on the horizon. Nick's father sounded the alarm. It was time to nurse his grandchildren, and his son didn't have a wife, not even a girlfriend. A terrible event happened when Nick was 25 years old. His father was gone. The man was accidentally shot during a hunting trip. How terrible is it to be killed by your own friend? After learning of his father's death, Nick fell into a terrible depression. His father was everything to him, but literally everything. And just like that, he was gone so abruptly overnight. It was truly frightening for the young man. How would he be without his father now? That day, when the older man went hunting, Nick was supposed to go with him, but he couldn't because of work. The guy was a professional boxer on top of that, and he had an important fight that day. After hearing about the tragedy, Nick started drinking. As a consequence, he got a leg injury when he got up in one of the bars with the same drunkard. Because of the injury, his career was over, and his passion for hunting was forgotten forever. After his father's death, Nick promised himself never to pick up a gun again in his life. Life was going downhill. None of his friends or family could control the unhappy and lost man. Spitting on everyone, he continued to drink. One cold winter day Nick, drunk to pieces, lay in the street, not far from the bar where he had surrendered before. He was already used to such a life. After all, every day was similar to the previous one. At first, Nick woke up in a terrible state of hangover tormented him, leaving no chance to recover to normal life. If Nick woke up at home, it was already a big victory. After all, he could often find himself in very questionable places after waking up. Nick had the next goal was to find money for his future life, and of course, the soonest possible. If friends Nick has no friends left, his former colleagues had long ago dissociated themselves from him. And his job, of course, was not. Therefore, there was only one option. Generous mom, Nina. Nick's mother, even though she realized that he would drink all the money he received from her, she couldn't refuse her beloved only son. He looked ingratiatingly into her eyes, swore, swore that he would never touch alcohol again. And he needed the money to get a new job. He begged, sometimes he cried. Basically, it was the same thing every day. And the woman, unable to bear it, gave her son the money. He, in turn, took the money and started to spend it immediately. When he went outside, he would immediately take a bottle, and the whole next day would pass in an alcoholic delirium. The next day, he'd wake up with a terrible hangover, beg for money, get drunk again. His life became a living hell. There seemed to be no way out of this hell. So it went on until one special winter day, Nick stolen by the guards from the bar planned to continue drinking alcoholic beverages, but already in a more modest place and was about to find new drinking buddies. As suddenly unexpectedly for himself, but quite expected for others. He collapsed on the winter near the bar. He tried to get back on his feet, but all in vain. He had too much to drink, and all he could do was mooch in one place and fall deeper into the snowdrift. That's how he met her. A young girl, short, with a big blue hat, stopped beside him. You're all right. Should we call an ambulance? Nick tried to focus on the person he was talking to, but it wasn't working. He didn't say anything. 
something incomprehensible, again tried to rise to his feet, but again lost. He collapsed even harder. Are you drunk? asked the girl. She took a step forward and tried to lift the rather large man to his feet. But her strength was not enough, and she almost fell into the snowdrift after him. Are you drunk? She confirmed her own words and was about to leave the drunkard in the snowdrift, but suddenly something clicked inside her. She examined the found drunkard so handsome, and in such a state she couldn't leave him like that. And it was quite cold outside. Anyway, a passing girl took pity on the strange alcoholic and started to lift him to his feet. She managed to put him on the nearest bench. Taking a breath, she began to search his pockets in order to find a cell phone. She found it. The girl rejoiced. Fortunately, there was no lock. Digging through the contacts, strangers and found it. As it seemed appropriate to her at the time, pressed the call button. Hello, Nick. A voice sounded in the receiver, concerned Nina Mother Nick. Hello, hello. My name is Nancy. I found your son right outside. He's not well. He seems drunk. It's freezing out. I don't think he should spend the night outside. Why don't you take him in? Oh, our woman's sobbing. Thank you now, what's the address? Nancy shifted her gaze to Nick, then listened in the voice of a woman she didn't know, lost, sad. She felt sorry for the poor mother and answered her cell phone. You know, I can bring him myself. I'll call a cab now. Oh, don't bother, Nick's mother lamented. Well, if it's not too much trouble, I'll dictate the address. From that evening, the young people never parted again. Nancy brought Nick home and grateful Nina, having paid for the cab, offered the girl to stay in the guest room. It was getting rather late. Nancy gladly agreed. After all, she was just passing through town. She was in town for a refresher course, and she didn't want to spend the night in the hostel where she was staying. The next day sobered up. Nick realized he'd fallen head over heels in love. Nancy was the girl he had dreamed of all his life. She was exactly what he wanted to be around. His late father. Kind-hearted, kind, sweet. She didn't leave a stranger in need spent her entire evening looking into Nancy's bright, sky-blue eyes at him. Nick was melting. Thanks to her, he quit drinking. Thanks to her, he was able to rebuild his reputation. The young people were married after six months of dating and after another year together, their firstborn son was born to them. Five years later, they had their long-awaited daughter. Unfortunately, Nick could not return to professional boxing because of his injury, but the knowledge he gained at the Sports Institute helped him to get a job as a masseur. After a few years of employment, Nick managed to open his own massage parlor and continue to work for his own pleasure. Beloved wife, children, happy family life, finally helped to climb out of the hole in which he had driven himself. Finally, Nick fulfilled his father's advice. He married a good girl, and she bore him wonderful children. Too bad his father himself never lived to see that moment. Nick stood in the middle of his office. Lucy's running away from the reception made Nick's mind go blank. He hadn't realized how hard it could be to do the right thing in a situation like this. Of course, there were all kinds of people among his clients. Both men and women came to him for massages, both professional athletes and ordinary people who wanted to relax under his strong and skillful hands. Of course, there were different situations, some of the female clients sometimes explicitly hinted to Nick about further closer relationships. Others even openly asked him out on dates. But he had never had anyone as frank as Lucy before. Nick knew he was a handsome man. He was always handsome, even when he was lost at the bottom of a bottle. But as a rule, upon learning that Nick was happily married, lusting, his women would conciliatory raise their hands and abandon any attempt at intimacy. But this is Lucy. What was wrong with her? Nick shook his head and reached for a small notebook. Lying on the coffee table by the tightly finished window. Yep, another 35 minutes, Nick rejoiced. With the schedule before the next customer, there was still time. And the man decided not to waste it for nothing. He pulled his cell phone out of his pocket, opened his contacts and poked his finger into his favorites dialing the number hiding under the name Beloved, Darling. I'm not distracting you. Asked the man without waiting for his wife's reply. Hello. No, no, no. 
The next customer is in an hour and a half, the girl answered. We're sitting with the girls, having coffee. And you were supposed to have a client right now. Yes, Nick answered thoughtfully. I should have, but she had already left. I thought if you're free to have a bite to eat too. I still have half an hour to spare. Why did she leave? It was clear even on the phone. As the wife frowned. Okay, then I'll come to you now, you tell me. Waiting, said Nick. Before hanging up the cell phone. Nancy was a very ordinary girl. She was no better or worse than anyone else. She was just ordinary. Not particularly distinguished in appearance or intellect. A simple, unremarkable person. She grew up in a very ordinary family. She got average grades in high school and had average grades in college. And even among her sisters, she was average. She never dreamed of anything great, never envisioned herself as a star or an actress. From childhood, she knew that she would have a very ordinary life with an ordinary husband. Yes, Nancy thought she just knew her true worth well. Though in truth, she often failed to appreciate herself at face value. She always thought that something was wrong with her. Her height was too short. Her clothes were too big. Her eyes were too small. Her nose was too small. Her grades were low and her knowledge was poor. Sometimes she even felt that she was not even an average girl, just some faceless gray mouse. After school, Nancy went to study at the Faculty of Economics, as all to anything, especially not striving. But after graduation, realizing that a decent profile work she cannot find, and decided to learn to master manicurist, attended various trainings and master classes. Trained thought, maybe she will be lucky in this field. But it all turned out to be as usual to the ugly ordinary. Nancy got a job in one of the most ordinary beauty salons and received an average salary for her work. She had already lost all interest in life until she met her Nick, the man of her dreams and future husband. Nick Nancy came to her hometown for work. The owner of the salon where she worked before she met her future husband insisted that her employees go to advanced training courses. Nancy did not even think to argue with her boss, so she was one of the first to go to another foreign city. Since Nancy didn't have much money and the former boss, though she sent Nancy to the training and paid for the road, but didn't bother to pay for her accommodation, and the girl had to rent the cheapest one. With all the consequences, as they say, a hostel. On the day she met Nick Nancy had left her courses in the direction of this temporary accommodation, which was on the very outskirts of the city. Nancy didn't know what could be worse getting through the dark dingy streets of the city passing bars and suspicious stores or being in the hostel itself in a place where eight people slept in one room and not all of them liked to shower. Nancy walked along the next bar and as she passed it her heart began to pound with renewed vigor and her hands clutched the can to the point of pain. Not many people could be found in a place like this. Nancy had never thought that this was where she would meet her destiny. When she saw the man sick in the snowdrift, a strange feeling settled in her chest. Maybe fate itself was trying to give her a sign. When she saw Nick, Nancy really thought the man was ill. It didn't even occur to her that he was drunk. Nancy was a kind, sympathetic girl. She would never leave a man in distress. Everyone who knew Nancy, at least a little noted these positive qualities of hers, kindness, willingness to help. But the girl herself saw nothing special in herself at all. It was difficult for her to see anything that would make her stand out from the crowd. When Nancy realized that the man didn't need help at all, and she was ready to pass on, but that unfamiliar feeling made her stop. That's when she got a good look at him. A tall, insanely handsome man was lying in the snow like an expensive, discarded toy. Seeing the features of his face, the girl couldn't take her eyes off him for a long time. Before this, Nancy had only seen such handsome people on the covers of fashion magazines. What was her older sister reading? Yes, on the television screen. For a handsome man like this man to pay attention to her, Nancy wouldn't even dream of it. And he looked kind of poor and lost. You could tell this man wasn't living his life. It was not without difficulty that she sat him down on the bench, found a black down jacket in the pocket, a cell phone, dialed her mother's number, called a cab, put the handsome man in the car and drove off with him. While they were driving, the man fell asleep, collapsed on the shoulder of his savior. 
The girl's heart hammered with renewed vigor, though she realized that this man was just drunk. She enjoyed his closeness, his warmth. When Nina offered Nancy to spend the night at their house, Nancy gladly agreed. It was better than going back to that lousy hostel. And a chance to see the handsome man again. A mother saved. Stranger settled Nancy fresh bedding with painted on it seashells, fed warm salad with fried, shrimp scattered in gratitude. The next morning, when the girl was about to leave the apartment of her new acquaintances, she accidentally crossed paths with Nick in the hallway. Seeing him sober, Nancy was speechless. He seemed to have become even more handsome, even more masculine. He stared into her eyes for a long time. Nancy was embarrassed and immediately thought maybe there's something wrong with me. She lowered her head in embarrassment and was about to jump out of the apartment when suddenly she heard something she never expected to hear from such a man. You're so beautiful, forgive me. Nick said quietly. Nancy couldn't believe her ears. A guy like that was paying attention to her. She had always thought she was unworthy of such men. After getting to know him better, Nancy was finally convinced that Nick was the man of her dreams smart, handsome, caring. She just couldn't believe her happiness. Just like that, these young people found in each other what they both dreamed of. A couple like this had yet to be found. When Nick proposed to her, Nancy thought she was going crazy. In what way, he liked me. She asked herself the question many, many times daily. Nick told her lover how incredibly beautiful she was. But Nancy let all the compliments pass by her ears. The girl's complexes sat too deep in her mind. Probably she never fully believed in her happiness. A few years after the wedding passed very quietly and at the same time troublesome. Children appeared, and with them the inevitable domestic difficulties. True, the loving couple overcame all this easily. Their family life only became stronger after the appearance of a son, and then a daughter. But after Nick opened his massage parlor, Nancy realized that there was a new problem in her life. From inside Nancy wished for a nasty gray feeling, a creepy jealousy. Nancy changed jobs, taking a job at the salon closest to Nick's studio. That way she felt she could control her spouse. When Nick and Nancy had a free moment, the girl always came to her husband's office. They had lunch together, drank coffee, and just had a good time. Nancy had seen many of her husband's clients. Beautiful, young, slim. Jealousy choked the young wife with a terrible force. In her mind, she well understood that Nick was incapable of cheating, but in her heart, the girl's heart bled. When she saw another new beauty walking into the office of her brutally handsome husband cheating, if it actually happened, would become for Nancy the most real nightmare. It scared the young mother to the point of tears and chest pain. Nick. The door to the office swung open, and Nancy stepped confidently inside. What happened? Sweetheart, the man smiled broadly. He set aside the electric kettle that had just boiled and walked over to his wife and hugged her tightly. Bending almost in half, he buried his nose in her hair. I've seen you since this morning, but I've missed you, he said, pulling away from Nancy. How late are you working tonight? I have three clients today, but all after 12. The girl answered, looking around the office. And you were supposed to have five, but he was embarrassed. I'll be off early today. Then I'll pick up the kids myself. Okay, Nancy replied. So what happened with your client? She went inside and sat down on the white leather sofa. You never told me. Well, the man became even more embarrassed, running his palm through his hair. There had been a misunderstanding. Forget it. Nick turned on the streams, walked over to a small coffee table on which stood the kettle, and began to go through the colored packages of tea bags in his hands. Do you want tea or coffee? Tea, Nick. My wife interrupted the monsieur. What misunderstanding? I don't get it. Explain exactly what happened. Nick did not turn around, froze in place. He knew perfectly well how jealous his spouse was, and he did not want to tell about what had happened. Who knows how Nancy would react? Better to just keep quiet. Well, stretched the man one client didn't like the massage. She left almost immediately without paying. He opened the rustling and wrapping of the tea bag with a sharp movement. Such is the misunderstanding. I'll have black with cranberry. 
and you didn't like the massage. What kind of client is that? Who were you with this morning? She got up from the couch and walked over to the table where Nick was standing. Where's your notebook? Yeah, forget it. The man blurted out, almost stuttering, the new girl. You don't know. At the same moment Nancy, who had found the notebook on the edge of the table, started flipping through it, looking for the information she needed. That's today, so who's here? She ran her eyes over her spouse's schedule in surprise. Her eyebrows went up. What Lucy? How is that possible? She marveled. While the man, completely unable to lie, panicked the second he did. His spouse interrupted him, Lucy. That's the one I saw, isn't it? She asked glumly. That's your regular customer. Why does she come to you five times a week? If she doesn't like massages, Nick is finally embarrassed by this. That's babbling. Talon is different. Lucy, yeah, the new one. Just goes by the same name Nancy, crossing her arms over her chest. Are you lying to me? She shouted out. Of course, she knew her husband well and knew perfectly well when he was lying. You're hiding something, Nick. Why are you lying to me? Nick stared at the floor. I'm sorry, I was just making excuses. He thought to himself, he was a fool. It's time to learn how to lie properly. Lucy and I just had a little fight, that's all. No big deal. Really, just forget it. Still angry, Nancy replied. Her husband's last words to the contrary only served to irritate her. She looked around the office once more, really, this time much more carefully wondered what he was hiding. She looked at Nick once more. He was smiling with his mouth full. Nancy knew full well that smile did not bode well. Nick was blatantly lying, looking her straight in the face. She walked around the studio hoping to see something that would help her deal with the situation. She peeked behind the changing screen and nearly passed out from shock. What is this? With tears in her eyes, Nancy screamed in front of the man's face at the stranger's accountant. You cheated? I was cheated on by Nancy. It seemed as if the worst of her nightmares had been fulfilled. She literally forgot how to breathe. The girl continued to shake her bra until, slowly, she settled right down on the cold stove. Paul, how could you? You swore to be faithful always. The girl said quietly. Life seemed to have lost all meaning. Why did you do this to me? Nick squatted down in front of his wife. There was real, genuine horror in his eyes. I didn't cheat on you, honey, he said. I put my hand to the girl's cheek. I swear I would never. Then what is it? She asked with a nod, pointing to the bra she still held tightly in her hand. At that second, she felt as if she had been electrocuted. She shoved the stranger's item away from her in disgust to another corner in the studio. Images of both that girl's husband and the other girl's husband immediately came to mind. Her heart seemed to be slowly inserting a thick and long needle of betrayal. I did not cheat on you, the man firmly repeated his words. He pulled his spouse by the arms, forcing her up from the floor, sat her down on the couch. You see, it's Lucy. And he told his wife everything that had happened to him. This morning told not withhold loved ones not a bit. It seems that on that day he was able to realize one important thing wife is better never to lie. No matter how awful the truth might be. Especially since it was really not his fault at all. Nancy listened to her husband without interrupting. When the story was over, she looked carefully into his eyes. You, you're not lying. Nancy said quietly, carefully looking over Nick. The man didn't know how to lie at all. So to understand. When he was telling the truth, it was easy to understand. She got up from the couch, walked over to Nick, and rising on tiptoe, kissed him on the cheek. Thank you for the truth. I'm sorry, Nick apologized nonstop. I just didn't want you to be nervous, especially such an act by that girl. I know how jealous you are. I just didn't want you to worry. I understand, nodded Nancy. Next time says things like that you did well for discovering that Lucy. I hope she doesn't come again. I too said Nick shifted from foot to foot. Actually, the man was being sly. He didn't want to lose that kind of clientele at all. Of course, it wasn't because she had a crush on him, but she paid good money for massages. It's just that she was a regular client of mine. It's a shame we're losing a certain amount of money a week. 
Of course, she wasn't the only one who kept our earnings, but we would still notice the absence of that money. I understand, finished Nancy's husband's sentence. She adjusted the edge of her striped shirt. Okay, I'll think of something. You asked the man in surprise. Honey, you're my best, of course, but how are you going to help here? You'll get more customers. I'm against it. Are you tired enough as it is? No, no, Nancy replied. It's just that I'm just, shall we say, advertising my services. I have a couple of wealthy ladies in my clientele. Maybe I should give them your number. I could use the extra money anyway. That way we can make up for the money we lost. You think it'll work? With hope in your voice? The man asked. It would be great. You're so clever. Stop it. Laughing, his wife stopped him. She looked at her left wrist, wearing a small, dainty watch. Do you have a client? I'll be off in 11 minutes. By the way, who do you have there? Nick smiled broadly at the man. Don't worry. Nancy smiled tiredly back. I will go then from daycare, from school. The kids are being picked up today by you, me. Nick pulled his wife into a hug. After the last conversation between the couple, Nancy had the rather important task of helping Nick find new, and most importantly, regular customers. As jealous as the girl was, she couldn't help but recognize the fact that her spouse was an excellent masseur, and hiding such a good master from the rest of the family would be a real crime. The family budget was mostly kept on Nick's earnings. Of course, Nancy earned money herself, but her salary, her wages were many times lower. Nancy had been working in a rather good and expensive beauty parlor for several years. Among the clientele were some truly rich and even famous ladies in town. This salon was one of the most prestigious in the city. It employed many good masters, manicurists, colonists, hairdressers, and a beautician. True, the paychecks weren't as shiny as the clients. Kelly, the owner of the salon, was a lady of groomed, luxurious appearance. She was incredibly wealthy, but she kept her female employees in a tight grip. A late fee didn't please the hostess. Appearance was also a fine. The fines poured down on the workers literally by the river. The workers of the beauty salon often gathered together to get over the bones of sweat, annoying boss. But beyond simple conversations and gossip nothing went. Painfully such a workplace was a famous elite. In such a salon you could gain experience, make useful acquaintances, find girlfriends. In general, you could get almost everything, but not earn good money. Nick, as soon as he opened his own salon, began to bring his family a really good income. Of course, the expenses also increased. It was necessary to pay for the rent of the premises, but the income still turned out to be many times more. The family was able to afford a good apartment in the mortgage. The eldest schoolboy son was given to paid additional and prestigious classes in a sports school. In general, Nick was now earning really well, so quite expected the loss of his clients. Not at all in the family's plans. Nancy decided that she would find her husband new clients by all means. Nancy hissed at the tall skinny girl with a big gap between her teeth. Where'd you disappear to? I went to my husband's for coffee. Nancy started to make excuses. I've got plenty of time before my next client. I don't understand why I have to come to 8 o'clock when the first client is at 1 o'clock, because the salon works from 8. The girl, the receptionist, kept hissing. You get a ticket. Nancy rolled her eyes, as if it was possible not to get a ticket. What's the problem? It's not like I don't have any clients at this time, yeah. But there might have been some. The receptionist looked arrogantly down at her interlocutor. What if a client came in and wanted an emergency manicure? And we don't have any available masters. You didn't think about that. She was here. Before I left, I checked with her to see if she was going anywhere. Nancy parried. She's a great technician. And it's unlikely that in the half hour I was gone there would have been a flood of customers without appointments. Nancy squared her shoulders proudly noting how annoyed the receptionist was beginning to get. Well, I'm off to work. Those spit out the receptionists. Go and wait to be fined. Nancy's working day went on as usual. The master listened much more attentively to her clients, trying not to miss the slightest detail from the simple gossip. Just in case someone had a stiff neck or a sore back. She tried to be friendly. 
She tried to catch the right moment when she could promote her husband's work openly and without embarrassment. The first client turned out to be a young and pretty girl. And in the first minute, Nancy felt a slight prick of jealousy. My Nick is going to get fat, Nancy thought, but tried to push the unpleasant thoughts away. Away. She tried to get her client to talk, but she was unfortunately quite silent. The young lady stared lazily at her cell phone screen while Nancy was giving her complicated extensions. The second client was a bit more cooperative. A middle-aged woman refused and blurted out to her manicurist. She managed to complain about her fool of a husband and tell about her son's school problems. Tell the story of her younger sister, who cheated on her boyfriend. When the client finally fell silent and Nancy gently asked if she was interested in contacts of a good monsieur, the woman was taken aback. What do you think you're doing? She was indignant. Keeping your distance? Nancy was beginning to lose hope. Of course, it was only the first day when the girl was trying to find clients for Nick, but she was noticeably asleep. And really so since you can't openly advertise extraneous services here. Finally, the day came to an end, and Nancy sat moodily waiting for the last client. She had already gotten a text message from her spouse. He wrote that he had picked up the kids and the whole family was waiting for her at home. Nancy couldn't wait until the end of the workday. What if the client canceled the appointment? Finally, there was a quiet clack of heels and the receptionist entered the employee room. Nancy, your client is here. The girl was finally happy. Remind me who your regular aunt is. Well, the administrator thought, go already, if you don't want fines. Nancy smirked and went back into the hall. There already sat her last customer for the day an adult large woman. She looked to be in her late fifties. Adriana Constant on the wall, this woman looked like she was cut out of some movie about the lives of rich and powerful matrons. She always wore a rough woody, perfume, hers dark. Her red hair was styled in a sixties hairstyle, and her big glasses with black and right. Already too much made her look like a frog. Nancy said hello sat down in her seat across from her. Next to this woman, she always felt a kind of inexplicable calm, a peacefulness. Adriana seemed to be able to protect her from everything in the world. Nancy was suddenly reminded of her own mother. It's good to see you. The girl smiled broadly at her client. What are we doing today? Thank you, Nancy. Adriana nodded discreetly in response as usual, manicure and red coating, gel varnish, you know I don't cheat on myself, Nancy smiled again. Of course I do, then let's get started. The girl began to remove the old coatings from the client's nails. She decided to continue their conversation. That's why I love you, Nancy. You never impose your taste on me. And the other masters, why do they always pester me with their glitter designs? Whenever you come, it starts right away. Adriana raised the tone of her voice, trying to portray the masters she was fed up with. Let's try it once. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Bub, why are they doing this? And Nancy laughed modestly. It's just that we masters like to do new things. So we offer to try different designs in case the client agrees. And I don't suggest you because I know you well. Red gloss is your everything. The woman laughed. That's right. She suddenly frowned sharply, grabbing the back of her neck with her free hand. Oh, it hurts. My strength is gone complained the client, holding the back of her wide neck. Did you sell it? Nancy stirred. This is the right moment, she thought to herself. The girl aloud tried to give her voice the most open-minded tone. They say that in such cases massage helps well. Carelessly answered the master, trying not to give away her own excitement. What if I scared her off? Yes, Adriana thoughtfully stretched out, examining her brush before, putting it in the lamp. Where do you get a good painter? Honey, who do I go to? They're all crooks. Good craftsmen are worth their weight in gold these days. But you know what I mean. Nancy read. All a throat think. I don't know, there are some good masseurs. Well, who's arguing? The client was surprised. Of course there are, but you still need to find them. I had a good master. And what do you think? He left for another country. The woman sighed deeply. What can we do in such times? Nancy took her eyes off her client's nails and looked into her eyes with confidence. It's time. She thought to herself, 
Adriana. You know my husband's a masseur, and he's got a couple openings right now. He's great, can I give you his number? Nancy asked, and holding her breath, went back to the monitor. Adriana was silent for a long time. Nancy, unable to bear the long pause, blurted out, I think you are the one who can be discounted. The woman laughed loudly at Nancy. What kind of discount? You think I'm figuring out if I have enough money? She shook her head angrily. I'm just thinking, the man's a masseur. What if he starts hitting on me? And the woman laughed again. I'm kidding. I'm kidding about that assumption. Nancy shuddered. No, you don't. She said quietly. I promise, I'm kidding about that in his salon. Interrupted Nancy Adriana in his salon. I mean he has his own salon. Interesting. She scratched her chin with her free hand. Well, give me your husband's contacts. Let's see. What kind of masseur is he? You know me? I'm a loyal and kind client. If I'm happy with it, I'll go all the time. And if a massage helps my neck, I'd pay any money. But what neighborhood is his salon in? It's not far away. Delighted, Nancy replied. She applied the last layer, and while the client was smothering her nails in the lamp, she looked for her husband's business card. Here you go. Nancy proudly raised her chin. I'm sure you'll like it. My husband is a real master of his craft. I'll be waiting for your feedback. Adriana looked at the manicure with interest. Good at good she did, as she did too often again for long periods of silence. It's beautiful. I don't know about your husband's massage, but you do an amazing manicure. Nancy, you're a talent. You should open your own salon by now. Nancy looked down at the floor, embarrassed. Tell me about it. What talent? Nancy returned home in high spirits. Her first day as an advertising executive, and already such a success. Although Nancy didn't know exactly who her regular client was, one thing she did know was that the woman had a lot of money. Nancy went into the apartment, took off her old shoes and her son Tom was next to her. Mommy, mommy screamed, oi, you're home. He ran up to his mother and literally clung to her. You're going to see the model I made in class today. Nancy couldn't hold back a smile, but of course she was only changing clothes now. She made her way inside the apartment and went about her routine. Washed her hands, changed into her home clothes, kissed her baby daughter. When she had already watched everything the older child wanted to show her and listened to the babe babble, Nancy went out to the kitchen there, with her head down on her hands, sat her husband neck, called her husband the girl. Why are you so sullen? The man shuddered, as if he had been pulled out of his reverie. He looked around and stared at his wife in surprise. Nancy, you're home. I didn't hear you come in. He jumped to his feet and started pacing the kitchen, as if he were a real housewife. She was here. Before I left, I checked with her to see if she was going anywhere. Nancy parried. She's a great technician. And it's unlikely that in the half hour I was gone there would have been a flood of customers without appointments. Nancy squared her shoulders proudly, noting how annoyed the receptionist was beginning to get. Well, I'm off to work. Those spit out the receptionists. Go and wait to be fined. Nancy's working day went on as usual. The master listened much more attentively to her clients, trying not to miss the slightest detail from the simple gossip. Just in case someone had a stiff neck or a sore back, she tried to be friendly. She tried to catch the right moment when she could promote her husband's work openly and without embarrassment. The first client turned out to be a young and pretty girl. And in the first minute, Nancy felt a slight prick of jealousy. My Nick is going to get fat, Nancy thought but tried to push the unpleasant thoughts away. Away. She tried to get her client to talk, but she was unfortunately quite silent. The young lady stared lazily at her cell phone screen. While Nancy was giving her complicated extensions, the second client was a bit more cooperative. A middle-aged woman refused and blurted out to her manicurist. She managed to complain about her fool of a husband and tell about her son's school problems. Tell the story of her younger sister, who cheated on her boyfriend. When the client finally fell silent, and Nancy gently asked if she was interested in contacts of a good masseur, the woman was taken aback. What do you think you're doing? She was indignant. Keeping your distance? Nancy was beginning to lose hope. 
Of course, it was only the first day when the girl was trying to find clients for Nick, but she was noticeably asleep. And really so since you can't openly advertise extraneous services here. Finally, the day came to an end, and Nancy sat moodily waiting for the last client. She had already gotten a text message from her spouse. He wrote that he had picked up the kids and the whole family was waiting for her at home. Nancy couldn't wait until the end of the workday. What if the client canceled the appointment? Finally, there was a quiet clack of heels and the receptionist entered the employee room. Nancy, your client is here. The girl was finally happy. Remind me who your regular aunt is. Well, the administrator thought, go already, if you don't want fines. Nancy smirked and went back into the hall. There already sat her last customer for the day an adult large woman. She looked to be in her late fifties. Adriana Constant on the wall, this woman looked like she was cut out of some movie about the lives of rich and powerful matrons. She always wore a rough woody, perfume, hers dark. Her red hair was styled in a 60s hairstyle, and her big glasses with black and right. Already too much made her look like a frog. Nancy said hello sat down in her seat across from her. Next to this woman, she always felt a kind of inexplicable calm, a peacefulness. Adriana seemed to be able to protect her from everything in the world. Nancy was suddenly reminded of her own mother. It's good to see you. The girl smiled broadly at her client. What are we doing today? Thank you, Nancy. Adriana nodded discreetly in response as usual, manicure and red coating, gel varnish, you know I don't cheat on myself, Nancy smiled again. Of course I do, then let's get started. The girl began to remove the old coatings from the client's nails. She decided to continue their conversation. That's why I love you, Nancy. You never impose your taste on me. And the other masters, why do they always pester me with their glitter designs? Whenever you come, it starts right away. Adriana raised the tone of her voice, trying to portray the masters she was fed up with. Let's try it once. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Bub, why are they doing this? And Nancy laughed modestly. It's just that we masters like to do new things. So we offer to try different designs in case the client agrees. And I don't suggest you because I know you well. Red gloss is your everything. The woman laughed. That's right. She suddenly frowned sharply, grabbing the back of her neck with her free hand. I'll find you some clients. Honey, I promise in a confident tone, the girl said. Now her goal became more tangible and more important than it had been in the morning. The next day started as it usually did. The whole family always left the house together, the spouses took the children to the garden and to school. And then Nick always accompanied his wife to the door of the salon, where she worked, Nancy kissed her husband on the cheek and disappeared behind the wide glass doors. Kelly's boss was already standing at the receptionist's desk. Good morning. Nancy smiled at her co-workers and bowed her head lightly. Kelly, you look great. The salon owner humbled her subordinate with a stern look. Kind I know. Low voice said the woman and continued to look incredulously at the master. What's he got you wearing? Nancy looked embarrassed. She lowered her gaze, examining her clothes. She was wearing a light airy beige dress and small florals on her feet, open-toed shoes with a small heel. I'm wearing a dress. Quietly, she replied. I can see that the dress snapped Kelly. It does not suit you at all such a figure as you should hide. Not emphasize all the shortcomings of the wrong clothes. The woman wrinkled her nose squeamishly and then summarized you are fined. Now go to work. Nancy guiltily lowered her head. On the whole, this outcome of events was quite expected. But she was already tired of hearing insults from her boss. She was ready to turn around and leave the hall. But something made her stop and try to defend her rights. Kelly began confidently. But what difference does it make how I'm dressed? If I'm going to put my uniform on top of my dress anyway? The supervisor snickered. Because that tastelessness will be noticeable anyway. I want my salon to employ not just good craftsmen, but people who are pleasant to look at. If you're still doing okay on the first point, on the second, you should think better about what you wear and how you look on your days off, do what you want and look how you want. But at work be kind enough to follow all the rules freely. Nancy took a deep breath, 
but there was no suitable answer to her argument. So she decided to simply retreat. I will go to work. Quietly the girl replied and headed towards the staff room. As she left, Nancy turned around and took a closer look at her boss. Putting aside the excessive bitchiness and the picky-faced lady, Kelly in general even liked Nancy. The woman always looked simply adorable. For example, today she was wearing a gorgeous black pantsuit. On her feet flaunted neat black loafers on a medium heel. Complementing this laconic image was a bright, small Birkin handbag. On her perfect from the iron to us face was applied no less perfect makeup, quite liquid from nature light. Brown hair was cut short and arranged in a neat hairstyle. Even the purposely leftover lock of gray hair looked on the woman, organically adding a certain zest to its owner. When Nancy had seen her future boss when she'd applied for a job here, for the first time, it seemed to her that she had her own special charm. This woman had an unshakable self-confidence. An incredible energy radiated from her. Nancy still remembered how she had described the woman when she had told her husband about her. She looked like an eternal vampire. She spoke with undisguised admiration in her voice. That's exactly the impression she had of Kelly. And there was generally a grain of truth to that description. As if the woman was signing off with energy from everyone else. All the fines, the reproaches of sneers. The feeling was that Kelly was doing well in front of her eyes when she expressed her dislike of yet another female employee. What's with the sweater? Terrible fine. Said in a menacing tone the supervisor, a young girl, and it seemed with each such phrase another of her wrinkles just revived, and the gray strand dissolved before her eyes. Returning to its former color, yes, Nancy really did like Kelly. There was something unusual about her, something that was beyond Nancy's own reach. The girl often looked at her boss like this. She wanted to understand how she always managed to look so gorgeous. Maybe she takes some vitamins, or all that cold and high forehead Botox. Either way, the secret of her beauty was as interesting to Nancy as anything else. More than once or twice, Nancy had enlisted the help of the internet to find out a little more about the bossy woman. What was her surprise when she found old pictures? Even as a young hopeful, there was nothing special about that girl at all. An ordinary gray mouse with no distinguishing appearance and her own flaws. An average girl just like Nancy herself. How did she manage to achieve such beauty without having any natural data? This question tormented Nancy more than any other. Maybe she would be able to achieve the same success someday, though Nancy did not admit it even to herself. In her heart, she would like to repeat the success of her supervisor, to become as beautiful, successful, confident as she was, to have her own beauty parlor. The working day was in full swing, but Nancy had no luck with the abundance of customers. A woman who was supposed to have come in earlier in the morning postponed the appointment, and the one who signed up at lunchtime never deigned to come. As a result, for the first half of the working day, Nancy broke down idly and left the workplace. She was afraid to do so. It seemed the supervisor was in no mood today. Oh, and there was nowhere to go. Nick, on the other hand, had a busy day. As a result, Nancy sat down in the back room in the company of her colleague Helen, a makeup artist. Helen had a pretty free day as well. This young blonde-haired girl had a round, freckled and freckled face and her hair seemed to be pure white in color. Helen looked around fearfully and realizing that there was no one else in the room but herself and Nancy, took a drag on her strawberry-flavored electronic cigarette. You're not quitting, are you? Nancy asked reproachfully, looking at her colleague. Helen Luxury was angry, fixed on herself a black-as-night sweatshirt with overly long sleeves. No, as you can see. Well, I quit cigarettes, and this she inhaled sweet and nicotine vapor again. That's not real. A puff of sweet-smelling vapor drifted lazily across the room. Nancy squeezed her eyes shut. Yeah, right, there's nicotine in there. So you're still smoking, albeit in a different format. Long time for you. Helen replied in a deep, low voice. You saw how angry the lion was today. Even angrier than usual. It's horrible. I've even been fined already. Nancy smiled sadly at her friend. At first glance, it might have seemed that the two could have nothing in common. 
but for some reason they quickly found common ground. Oh, come on. Why? Helen asked. Let me guess. Three seconds late. Smiled wrong. Nancy laughed back. Helen continued, well, I'm wrong again. Too much on the shower with not a soul at all. Not Tommy. Nancy got up from the small sofa the girls were sitting on and spun around in front of Lena. Developing her dress, Helen jumped up on the spot, realized huffed, and she and blinked embarrassed by her excessive volume. Wrong clothes. Case in point. Nancy sat back down on the couch. When your next client isn't anytime soon. Helen pulled out her cell phone and started flipping through the newsfeed. Boring, she stretched out, by the way. Do you know why she's so angry today, and why is that? Nancy asked interestedly. Do you think it was my dress that pissed her off? No, answered Helen. She quickly tucked her phone back into her pocket and switched to conspiratorial. Whisper leaned in close to Nancy's ear. You knew she had just gotten back from the ski resort. Yeah, I heard something like that. What about it? Nancy asked. So Cindy told me what Wendy told her. And Wendy told Kelly that she fell off her skis. They say it's the bruises. She can barely stand on her feet. Can you believe it? Helen's face expressed genuine interest. There was a feeling that the girl was telling not second-rate work gossip, but a real-world secret. And you know what else they say? Shit. Nancy shook her head disappointedly, pulling away from her friend. What's the big deal? Fell off her skis? What's the big deal? It's not even gossip. No, it's not. Helen grabbed her friend's hand and pulled her back to her. They say she just told Wendy that, but she didn't really fall. Hey, they say she's the one with the new lover. She left poor Helen all bruised and giggling behind her. Can you believe it, Nancy? I laughed at you a long time ago. What a load of crap. Who says that? Helen pouted resentfully, painted, liquid split pale pink lips. Cindy herself heard Kelly talking to her lover on the phone and told me what a broken phone it was. I don't know, Nancy stretched out. Cindy likes to exaggerate. Helen waved her hand cheerfully. But so what? She ventured to take a drag on the electronic cigarette again. But then she heard the clatter of heels somewhere outside the door and had to jump to her feet, waving her arms so that the person who entered wouldn't see the thick vapor. Nancy, the receptionist, Wendy came into the back room. You have a customer without an appointment. Oh, great. The manicure master rose to her feet, caught wearing her work apron. I'm on my way. Wendy humbled her colleague with a judgmental look. See why you can't leave in the middle of the workday. That's exactly why okay, okay. Nancy was laboring over a complicated nail extension. Her sudden client, a young girl of about 35 smelled interestingly of berries, of perfume. And on her wide t-shirt was a brightly colored logo. The customer herself was a little wordy. She explained in two words what shape of nails she wanted, and never decided on the color. Hooked on wireless full-size headphones, master manicurist realized that the client is not ready to make small talk, so she plunged into her own thoughts. Interestingly, when she could work in silence, Nancy's manicure was much better and more beautiful. She was expectantly thinking about the fate of her family. Where are we going to find clients for Nick? She wondered to herself. Probably every five minutes the idea of looking for a husband's clientele among her own female clients was not a bad idea, but not always feasible. For example, she had never managed to try offering the services of a massage therapist to anyone today probably shouldn't offer massages to everyone. Summarized. The girl is standing there, asking the women. Maybe they have a pain or a relative? That would be the right thing to do. Nancy, having finished the process of build-up in the waiting room, looked at the clientele. She pulled the large gold-colored headphones off her ears. Why? The client asked irritably. Have you decided on the color? It's time to apply the coating answered Nancy, smiling at the client's mouth. Now the girl began to carelessly flip through the palette of colors. Well, let's go with this one. She poked her finger. Brown color. Yes, it's, and the matte finishes everything. She asked before pulling her headphones back on. No, blurted out Nancy before she could think about what she was doing. What else is there? Nancy asked irritably, 
realizing that there was nowhere to go, she decided to go ahead. Forgive me for asking, but do you have any pain in you or maybe your relatives? I could recommend a good masseur. If you need one, of course. The client frowned unhappily. No, thank you. That'll be all. She asked unhappily. Yes, yes, sorry, answered Nancy and started to work. The girl put her headphones back on, and that was the end of the awkward dialogue. You can't do that either, Nancy thought. The workday was coming to an end. Nancy had a few more customers, but she didn't dare to offer her husband's services to any of them. When Nancy was about to go home, she was suddenly summoned to her boss's office. What's wrong? She thought and fearfully opened the office door. Kelly, you wanted to see me. She quietly closed the massive door leading into the office behind her. Yes, the woman replied sternly, not taking her eyes off the computer. Her desk stood in the middle of the large office. On her right hand was a giant indoor plant in a dark brown pot. On the left hand was a small replica of the statue of David. Nancy had been in this office before, but the pomp and pageantry of the place intimidated her. She asked the supervisor if I'd done something wrong. Of course you did. Kelly started yelling. What are you doing here? What do you think this is, a publicity stall? Nancy blushed from head to toe in embarrassment. I'm sorry. She started to justify herself. I just asked a couple times if anyone needed a massage, that's all. You see, my husband, and I don't care. The woman rose from the table, but the sharp pain made her plop ridiculously back into the chair. She cried out, rubbing her back with her hand and searching for something in a drawer. Nancy looked fearfully at her boss as she was suddenly reminded of today's silly gossip. Her whole body really, really hurt. Thought Nancy slightly embarrassed at having rejoiced in that fact. She began to think out the words to discreetly offer her spouse's services. But Kelly was the first to speak up. I don't care what your husband's up to. In my salon, my employees have no right to advertise anything, much less violate the personal boundaries of my clients. Why the hell are you asking our ladies about their personal business? This is unthinkable. Kelly angrily reprimanded and subordinate and at the same time managed to take some pill, claiming it with water from a beautiful glass bottle. Forgive me, it's just that I saw that my regular client had neck pain. So I offered my husband's help. He's a massage therapist. And then I did offer first. I apologize again. It's just that we're having financial difficulties. So the woman raised her hand up, thus ordering the subordinate monsieur to shut up. She repeated the word after Nancy thoughtfully. I could use a good masseur too. Nancy blossomed. Why did you leave my husband's card? He's very good at what he does. Kelly laughed evilly. I need the best of the best, not your hubby. Don't take it all out. I'm gonna get worse while you get off of the fine. And if you keep on firing me. Sorry, Nancy's drowning in her own apologies. She left her boss's office distraught. If we can't offer services here, how will Nick find new clients? A week passed. Nancy continued to work, but could no longer afford to advertise Nick's massage parlor in any way. As time went on, and the need for upcoming payments grew closer and closer, the family couldn't help but feel frustrated. Adriana, Nancy's favorite and most loyal customer, visited Nick and was as pleased as ever. She immediately booked her next appointment and left a generous tip. However, one client really wasn't enough Money in the family was getting scarce and expenses were increasing. Nick tried to advertise the services as best he could, but the truth was harsh. The man wasn't very good at it. And on top of that Nick once again lost a client. A middle-aged woman decided to ask the masseur out on a date. But when she found out that he was married, she refused his services completely. Nick fell more and more into a depressive state, and Nancy began to sound the alarm. Nick's business must be saved in one of the most ordinary working days, the girl had an unexpected event. She was called again to her superiors. Did you call for me? Asked Nancy, covering the door behind her. Something's wrong. Kelly looked even better than usual. Her plump lips never lost their smile and her eyes lit up like a girl's. Nancy was genuinely surprised at the woman's happy appearance. The one pronounced yes named. Come in, sit down, she said, 
continuing to smile radiantly. Nancy was taken aback for the first time in all the time she had worked here. She was asked to sit across from her. She took a leather chair standing nearby. A nasty squeak echoed around the room. Kelly rolled her eyes demonstratively, but made no comment on the wall of awkwardness. She waited until the subordinates were seated and began to speak, I wanted to ask you something. You're Nancy, aren't you? Nancy raised her blonde eyebrows. Right. What's good? You mean Nick is your husband? Yes, she answered, stammering slightly. And he's a masseur, yes, the one you advertised so fervently. The woman continued to ask me strange questions. Yes, yes, that's right. And again, I apologize. Interesting. Kelly stepped forward a little bit, and how long have you two been together? How's your married life? It's fine. Nancy had already completely lost the meaning of this dialogue. But for a long time, now we have a pretty grown-up son in school and a daughter in kindergarten. Everything's great. Family life is just fine. But why do you ask? Kelly laughed. It's not important that way. She smiled, flashing her teeth. She seemed to read respect in her eyes. Kelly said I wonder if it was the Nancy girl who got herself such a handsome man. How did you do it with your looks? Nancy went cold. She got nervous. All words were forgotten. A burning resentment began to wash over her. Of course, she had often thought herself unworthy of her spouse, but to hear it from a stranger. To hear it from a stranger was very, very unpleasant. Nancy continued to be sullenly silent. Well done. Suddenly her boss praised her. They say he really is a good masseur. That's true. Finally, Nancy found the strength to answer. May I ask who's talking? Have you heard any rumors of his skill? But you could say that. There's a respectable man who's already signed up with your Nick. Regular customers. Who they are is not important. Not that it's any of your business. Kelly thought about something. And then she said to be honest, when you told me about your husband, the messer seemed to me to be, well, some average specialist. And here is such a man. It's good to think about it. Thank you, you can go. Nancy, and would have asked something else, but the stern look of her boss made her leave the office. Who is this mystery man? Kelly's advice to Nick Nancy was lost in speculation, but in any case a client like her boss was quite good. A rich lady with plenty of free time for massages, the perfect customer for the service. And of course, Nancy was pleased with the fact that Kelly was already a lady of age. It meant there was no need to be jealous. That night, she returned home in high spirits. She couldn't wait to tell Nick that a new client had been found. And of course, to ask who exactly the mystery man was in his regulars. Honey, I'm home. Nancy quickly disrobed and immediately ran into the kitchen in search of Nick. Always when he finished work early, he was busy cooking, cooking dinner. Nancy opened the door to no one. Strange, she thought and headed straight for the bedroom. There was no one in the bedroom either. Nancy frowned, heading for the children's room, who were already home. Tom. The girl called out to her oldest son. Where's daddy? The boy smartly corrected his small, round, and cheeks went. I'm in charge of the eldest now. I'm watching Molly. What do you mean gone? Nancy asked. Where? On business. Why are you being such a baby? You'd better see what I made today. Tom began to show his mother all his handicrafts. Nancy herself, though she didn't show it in front of the children, was nervous. Where could Nick go without telling her? When the children were subdued and put to bed, Nancy was worried. Suddenly something was wrong. There was no way to panic. Soon there was the sound of the door opening. Nick. The girl rushed into the hallway, planning to ask her husband where you've been. And Nick, it seemed, did not expect to see his wife at home. Oh, I went to work. Work, Nancy asked in surprise. Isn't it a little late for work? Nick rubbed his eyes tiredly. I know it's late, I'm sorry, it's just some client. Couldn't get here any earlier, and he really wanted to make an appointment with me, so I made him an appointment for tonight. There's no such thing as too much money, especially in this case. I picked up the kids, took them home and almost straight back to the studio. Terribly tired. Nancy looked her husband carefully straight in the eye. Tired indeed. Thick lashes covered the top of the pouting green eyes. His hands were trembling. 
Nancy, forgetting what she wanted to tell, clarified A. This client is he who? A man? Nick nodded. Don't worry, honey, I wouldn't trade you for anyone. The man could, mauled his wife in the forehead and disappeared behind the bathroom door. Nancy was left puzzled. Nick never took clients this late in the day. He always said evening was time for family. Of course, given that expenses had gone up considerably, and the money really couldn't hurt, he was doing the right thing. But Nancy still felt something was wrong. That same night, when the spouses were getting ready for bed, the girl remembered what she wanted to tell her beloved. By the way, she suddenly exclaimed, putting aside the white tube of cream on the table. I wanted to tell you something. What asked Nick was already almost asleep. He rolled over from side to back, but he didn't open his eyes. I'm not at work. I mean, yes and no. You know, I was able to convince my boss to see you. She's very well paid. I think she could leave a nice tip. What do you think? Tipping is unlikely, Nick said quietly. She's the one who looks like a vampire. She's the Kelly. Really, not really. I convinced her, of course, but I contributed to it. She said you were recommended to her by someone who started seeing you on a regular basis. I wonder who that is? Who do you think? I don't know, Nastya. The man yawned contagiously. Let's go to sleep. Come on. The girl reached for the cotton lamp and turned off the light. For a second, she thought her husband had not agreed to something. Time passed. Life went on. At first glance, it might seem as if nothing had changed in the family's life. But Nancy couldn't shake the feeling that something was going on. Some little thing, something that was unnoticeable, but definitely went wrong. The girl tried to figure out what it was, but there was no way she could look at it with her full wide eyes. With each passing day, Nancy felt something bad approaching. Some background anxiety settled in her soul. Every day this anxiety grew and grew. And now it had become quite noticeable and significant. But what exactly was she afraid of? Nancy could not understand it. Nick worked more and more, more and more often. He wasn't home in the evenings. Nancy tried not to make a big deal of it. After all, he was working for the good of their family. But she couldn't hide her dissatisfaction. The couple began to quarrel more and more. More and more, often they preferred to dine in complete silence. Gradually, Nancy's worries turned into a real phobia. Could it be that her husband had fallen out of love with her? Concerned, she even set a trap for her husband. She had a copy of the keys to the studio where Nick worked. And one day she prepared herself in advance and arrived unannounced at her husband's office just as he was taking on another evening client. I do not remember myself from jealousy, she burst into the studio. Not realizing what she expected to see the girl almost with a foot open the studio and the doors, and whirlwind flew into the massage room. The elderly man receiving the massage was furious. He had never expected some, as he put it, crazy girl to barge in at the time of the appointment. So Nick lost another regular customer, and the couple's relationship soured even further. In one of Nancy's working days, she had an interesting dialogue, which later greatly influenced her future life. Nancy, hi. Helen burst into the staff room. Her blonde hair was gathered in a high, careless bun. Her long legs were pulled back by leather tights, and a wide, lightweight sweatshirt developed as she plowed into the room. What are you doing here? Not enough customers again. Nancy set to the side a small cup decorated with an angel. No, there are plenty of customers, but they're all after 12 again. Why am I sitting here? What's the point of us coming in at 800? I don't understand. The girl slightly tilted her head to the side. It would be nice to come at whatever time the first client is scheduled. Helen shrugged her shoulders. Well, you know, if someone comes in without an appointment, so you have to sit. The makeup artist took out a powder from her lacquered black bag. She opened it up and began to scrutinize her makeup. I've got a lot of clients today. That's great, Len, Nancy exclaimed. Are you having any luck today? No, it's you, I know. But wouldn't one manicurist be enough? And those who come without an appointment, not so many. And in general, in other salons, if there are no available masters, customers turn around. Well, you're right. Helen slammed his powder down loudly. Really, what are you sitting here for? 
go get some rest and go see Nick. You can be free as a breeze until 12. Aha. I don't want to get another ticket like that. Oh no, I'm not sitting here. That's all right. We need the money now. We can't lose a dime. Oh, come on. Helen smirked. No one will find you. There's no one. Go easy, don't worry, there's no money in your ear anyway, and won't be any time soon, or even in the next couple of weeks. Nancy looked at her friend questioningly. What do you mean? That she's away again. I didn't know. No, you didn't, Helen replied irritably. You see, you don't listen to local gossip and are not aware of what's going on. So listen, the girl quickly looked at the time, and making sure that she had a couple of minutes before the client sat down next to Nancy, and began to tell her friend the latest gossip. Our aunt has found herself another man handsome. They say he looks like some actor. But what about this new man? What about her husband? Nancy looked at Lena incredulously. Oh, you didn't know. She's always changing lovers like a glove. Just think of the story when she came back from the ski resort. Nancy interrupted her friend. Don't get distracted. What's next? Anyway, she's got some cool new crazy handsome guy. They say she fell in love like a girl. She's a Wendy herself, bragging about how handsome he is and everything. Me and the girls think she, well, bought him, but it's unclear, of course. Anyway, our aunt is head over heels in love. She has to work every day. She's not even going to the salon with him. So forget it, girl. You ain't gonna get no fines yet. Kelly hasn't been around here in a while. She probably forgot she even had a salon. That's right, Nancy confirmed it. I haven't seen her in a couple weeks. Love her. Oh, that's awful. Her poor husband. Helen brushed it off. Her husband has plenty of mistresses too, I think. Okay, I'm going to run down the hall. I have a client girl almost managed to leave the room. But Nancy stopped her with one unexpected and strange question. Wait, wait, who is her lover? Helen was taken aback. What do you mean, who? A man. I understand, I mean, where did she meet him? What does he do? Oh, how would I know? Ask Cindy or Corner, but she's not likely to tell you. I don't remember, either a doctor or a masseur. Why? Nancy thought she was doused with gasoline and set on fire with that phrase. No, it's nothing. Just wondering. All right, that's it. I'm off for a kiss. Helen sent an air kiss and disappeared through the doorway. Nancy's breath cleared. It seemed to her that she had forgotten how to breathe properly for mass uses. Could it be that even to herself the girl couldn't say what was swirling around in her mind? Could it be that her creepiest and most disgusting nightmare had come true? No, no, it was impossible. Nancy was drowning in her own thoughts. It seemed as if the whole world was leaving under her feet. She as in a fog approached her bag shaking hands, took out her cell phone, and already dialed the number of her spouse. As suddenly her mind could not withstand such an emotional shaking, and Nancy collapsed like under the leather present next to the sofa, losing consciousness for a couple of seconds. At the same moment a not-so-pleasant scene was taking place in Nick's office. I told you no. Nick dodged the arm dragging towards him. Don't touch me, you're interfering with my work. What kind of inaccessible? The commanding voice of a woman lying face down on the massage table was heard. She wiggled, trying to touch her masseur at least a finger, but he rudely stopped her attempts. Don't you like beautiful rich women? Nick took the couple steps back, wringing his hands in shame. How many times do I have to tell you? Kelly, I'm married. The woman got up from the table, honey, well, I'm aware of that. So what? I'm married too. You're making a big deal out of yourself. You need the money, don't you? I'm married. Nick kept repeating that phrase, storing up the incoming rage. This Kelly client was his punishment. She came to see him every day, or even a couple times a day. And each time, the same scenario played out, actively flirting, hinting to the man for further connection. Flirting languidly tried to induce Nick to cheat. She even offered him money for it. Nick was beyond angry. This woman was only making him gagging with her behavior. And how did she talk about his beloved wife? Sometimes he even wanted to give the scoundrel a good slap. So much so that she pissed off the masseur. But Nick kept quiet. 
he understood perfectly well that the money that brought him such a client was necessary. With that money, he could pay a month's mortgage and a monthly rent for the studio. Time after time, he had to swallow his discontent. Time after time, he dug his nails into the palms of his hands to the point of pain and only modestly moved away from the annoying lady, not forgetting to repeat that they were married, that close relations between them were impossible. He, like a madman, repeated the same thing. It won't work out between you and me. I'm married. It won't work out between you and me. I'm married. But Kelly seemed to enjoy this talk. Nick's loyalty to her spouse and moral values only seemed to wet or the predator in her. As she had once admitted to Nick herself, she would not back down. No matter what it cost her. Okay, okay, now she laughed as she lay back down on the couch, continuing to work. Nick took a deep breath, exhaling hot air. This client was just impossible. He tried to pull himself together, calmed down, walked over to the massage table and went back to work. Continued doing the hated aunts, good massages. More and more often Nick wondered, is it really worth it? Is this money worth all his humiliation? Deep in his own thoughts, he accidentally squeezed the woman's skin a little harder than necessary. She bent more gently. What am I paying you this kind of money for? Nick rolled his eyes, but in response said sorry, please, and thought to himself worth the money. It's a job, it's a studio. It's all for my family. He continued to massage, counting the minutes until the session ended. But a frightening and even humiliating thought suddenly popped into his head. What would my father say? Nick tried not to think about it. Pretty soon this massage session would come to an end. Finally, the session was over. Kelly hid behind the partition to change her clothes. Nick was happy that it was over. And now this woman would be leaving the walls of his office. Nick had another client coming in soon, a rather famous soccer player in their town who was injured. At the moment when Nick was checking everything with his schedule, in his notebook, the phone rang. Hello, Nick pressed the button to accept the call. Hello, Nancy. There was a ringing silence coming from the phone. Hello, Nancy. What's wrong? Nick was worried sick. He thought he heard a noise. Hello. He kept yelling into the phone. What are you yelling about? Kelly appeared from behind the partition, buttoning up her red pantsuit. It's your bogeyman calling. Nick, never having waited for an answer, put the phone back on the coffee table. Probably called by accident, he thought, shifting his gaze full of rage to the client. Don't you dare talk about her like that, he said sternly. The session is over. I have another client soon. It's time for you to go. Kelly laughed out loud. Oh, well, come on. I don't know what she armed you with. She's got no skin, no face. How did a handsome guy like that marry a wire like that? You're wrong. My Nancy's the most beautiful girl in the world, aren't you? He's half-witted. He couldn't afford to lose the money Kelly was bringing in. Do you have to go? At least offer me a coffee. The woman walked around the studio and sat down on the white couch. Who's the client? I'll pay double instead. You can't do that, Nick replied. At that moment, however, he received a text message. He picked up his cell phone in his hands, read the incoming messages. The same athlete who was about to show up for a sports massage session texted that he couldn't make it today. Kelly was next to the masseur. She looked over the man's broad shoulder and read the message. That's great. You have some free time. The woman said cheerfully. What shall we do? Do you remember my offer? She smiled predatorily and returned to the embrace of the sofa. I'll pay you well. Nick covered his eyes, thought she was offering good money. He had a distinct feeling that something inside him had broken. Something important, something that he had cherished so much all these years. And he said quietly, his head well down, approached the studio door and closed it so that it couldn't be opened with the key on the backside. Nancy woke up, collapsed on the couch in the staff room, looked around. She realized that the realization that her spouse might not be faithful to her had made her faint. She was shaking. No, no, he couldn't do this to me. She repeated to herself like a mantra. She reached for the phone on the floor. But she was brought out of her panic by Wendy appearing in the doorway. Nancy is a customer, said the receptionist. What's the matter with you? You're not yourself. Ah, manicure. 
What if you grabbed your head? I'm just not feeling well right now. What is it, Nancy? Wendy lost her seriousness for a second, and there was a look of concern on her face for her colleague. You've got to pull yourself together. This client's booked up a month in advance. Yeah, yeah, now give me a couple seconds. Wendy frowned. Okay, I'll try to keep her distracted for as long as possible, but take your time. I don't know what happened in there, but work is work, let's get cleaned up. I got it. Thanks. Nancy stood up and headed toward the sink nearby, when she suddenly decided to make one thing clear. Wendy was still standing in the doorway of the back room. What's harsh? Asked the receptionist. Is it true that Kelly has a new love? Some incredibly handsome man? And that Golly's eyes rolled with anger, but quickly returned to their previous impenetrable state? It's not entirely clear why, but Wendy decided to answer such an inappropriate and even rude question. Appeared yes. She bragged to me, nonstop, saying he was handsome, indescribable. She's really in love. That's great. Nancy said it quietly. So, it's true. Her new masseuse Wendy rolled her eyes. It's true that Kelly had recently met him and was crazy about him. The receptionist shook her head theatrically. Oh, you're a gossip. You have to stick your nose in everything. Okay, well, I'm being nice today, so I'll answer what you're interested in. Yes, she's in love. Yes, there's a freebie coming. No fines, while she's busy with her new boyfriend, you can relax a little. Wendy frowned, but not hard, mindful of his duties. Got it. Nancy replied deftly understood. I'm going out into the hall now, give me a minute. Come on, come on, hurry up. Nancy washed herself with the icy stream and took a long look at the water flowing down the drain. It seemed to her that life was over. There seemed to be no more point in living. She spent another couple minutes in silence, trying to quiet the trembling in her knees and hands. Thoughts swirled chaotically in her head, and by contrast, there was no emotion left. Nancy took to calming herself down. Maybe it's not my Nick after all. It's not like he's the only masseur in town. Yeah, it's not him. With each such thought, the girl felt a little better. She continued to develop them in a similar fashion. She's old. Nick wouldn't cheat on me with her. Nick wouldn't cheat on me at all. Thought Nancy, calmed down, found the strength to go out into the hall and get to work. Be that as it may, Nancy still had two children. Even if her spouse would betray her, one must live at least for them. The workday was coming to an end. She only had two clients today, and both were following each other, leaving no break in between. The couple had decided early in the morning that Nancy would pick up the children from school. Here she was about to leave work. She had no more appointments, and there was no point in staying late. No one would be fined. The boss is busy with some man. Just as long as it's not mine. Nancy thought to herself, and as she was about to leave work, she decided to check her phone. During the time she had been busy, she had received two messages. One was from her husband, and another rather strange one from an unknown subscriber. Probably spam, the girl thought, and was ready to delete the suspicious sums. But first, she wanted to read the first message from Nick. It said, honey, I'm going to be late today. I have a couple of clients tonight. Don't worry, everything's fine. See you at home kisses. After reading her heart's message, Nancy missed a couple of thuds. The feeling of anxiety that had accompanied Nancy lately behind creeped with renewed vigor, and the sense of impending trouble hit her head. Again, he was delayed. The resentment swept over her more than usual. He's fallen out of love with me. With pain in her heart, she thought. Nancy twirled the phone in her hands. She remembered the second, that strange message. Wanted to delete it without reading it, but something made her still look at her forehead. Drops of sweat came out as she realized that there was a picture attached to the message. She slowly poked at the screen and opened the message. Her heart, she thought, had stopped forever. She was no longer capable of living in this world. She was no longer capable of loving. Her soul was sucked into a black mark and slime. Her head spun and her hands treacherously shook, and her smartphone clattered down the screen onto the stone slab. The photo that the unknown person had sent was of Nick, completely naked. Apparently, caught red-handed in the frame, he, like Zhukov in January, 
was frozen in it forever. Accompanying the photo, the message read now he's mine, though Nancy dropped the phone from her hands. She memorized those lines for the rest of her life. He's cheating, he's cheating on me with her, thought the unhappy girl, pouring bitter tears. His mistress's face was not visible in that photograph, but there was an important detail. Next to a completely naked Nick, her boss's bag was lying carelessly on the ground. Obviously, the frame was deliberately arranged so that the unhappy wife would realize exactly with whom she had been cheated. Nancy picked up the phone examined it. Shattered. She noted. Without a single emotion, the girl tossed it idly into her bag, walked out of the now-hated beauty parlor. She walked like a ghost, ignoring her co-workers who were saying goodbye to her and wanted to have a few words with her. Walking, ignoring the world, immersed in her own pain. Nancy walked along the highway. Hot and bitter tears ran down her cheek. It seemed to her that those tears consisted of a thick black mass of the shit that had settled in her soul forever. Betrayal and betrayal of her lover had been her worst nightmares. And now those nightmares had come true. Could it be that we really do bring into our lives what we think about most often? Either way now Nancy needed to think about how to rebuild herself after her heart had been shattered to pieces. She didn't need this for her own sake, but only for the sake of her children. Nancy walked, trying to calm herself down before meeting the children. Nick no longer existed for her. Now he was just like that in that horrible picture. And in life, still is dead. That night Nancy, quickly picking up the children, left the apartment where she had lived with her husband for the past six years. She hastily threw the children and her belongings into a suitcase and stormed out of the apartment. Now a new life awaited Nancy. At first she thought about waiting for Nick to come home from work and working things out with him. She imagined looking him straight in the eye, imagining asking, why did you do this to me? Nancy imagined looking sadly and longingly at the man she had once loved, who was now a stranger to her. But she couldn't, she couldn't stay. She didn't want to endure all that pain and humiliation again. Nancy left her home, trying to forget everything that had happened forever. She didn't want to think about Nick anymore. No longer wanted to think about how she had been treated. She felt like Nick had just been replaced by the old Nick. He couldn't have done that to her. The man who had sworn his loyalty to her would never cheat on the one he loved. That's not him anymore. Nancy rented an apartment. The city she'd been living in lately wasn't her hometown. And she had nowhere else to go. Borrowing money from her friends, she was able to afford a small studio apartment on the very outskirts of the city. She was no longer interested in the city center. Nancy wasn't going to show up for work anymore. She didn't need the proximity to the studio her now ex-husband had rented. Nancy told the kids that daddy was just away on a job, said their family was struggling financially and now needed to save more money. This was generally true. Nancy had not yet found a new job and the main income was lost. The girl did not want to see her husband ever again. She had even changed her phone number so Nick wouldn't find her. Picked up her kids the same day from her old school and daycare. Changed her whole life. Time passed, but the heart of the betrayed wife continued to ache with the same intensity. Her eldest son Tom asked his mother why she was so sad, but she kept coming up with excuses. One day the boy got to the bottom of it and asked if it was because of daddy. Yeah, but Nancy shook her head no. No, sweet daddy had nothing to do with it. I'm just a little sad, the mother replied, trying not to cry. Ever since the day Nancy left the apartment, Nick had been trying to find her. He called, he wrote, he looked for her through friends and acquaintances. But Nancy hadn't made contact. He couldn't know that she had locked herself away in her new apartment like a recluse and wouldn't let anyone near her. She barely answered calls and messages from friends of those she did give her new number to. She didn't even answer her own mother when she called to ask how she was doing. The days passed from one day to the next, and Nancy tried her best to get back into shape, but it wasn't working out well. One day, as she was going through the things she'd managed to pick up from her old house on site, she came across her keys, the very copy of the keys to the studio where her husband worked. She had the strange idea to show up at Nick's office unexpectedly 
and catch him red-handed and cause a real scandal. The woman, who had changed into a row, spoke softly. Maybe she's found someone else. Why are you so worried? You'll find a prettier, richer woman. By the way, this woman is much closer than you think. Shut up, shouted Nick in response. But okay, quietly replied Kelly, lying down on the couch during a massage. She began to think of a new plan of action. Bit by bit, little by little, Nancy was getting significantly better. She returned to her normal life and even answered her mother and friends' numerous phone calls. Life went on, no matter how it was, and Nancy, after seeing her children off to a new garden and a new school, sat down at her old laptop to find a new job. There were no suitable vacancies. The manicure master already had time to think that it would be possible to return to her hometown together with her children. As suddenly her cell phone suddenly rang, called from an unknown number, and she frowned, thinking that Nick called from another phone. But something made her answer the call. Hello, I'm listening. Wrapped up with a heart, she answered. Hello, Nancy. Hi, it's Adriana. Remember her? Wendy gave me your number. She told me you quit. How come? You know I only want my handyman. Nancy smiled warmly, delighted by the unexpected call. Hello, yes, I quit. Unfortunately, I won't be able to see you. Try to make an appointment with Arena. She's an excellent specialist. Nancy, the woman sighed heavily. You don't understand, it's you I want to see. For the first time in a long time, Nancy felt a warmth developing in her chest. She was insanely pleased to hear that. Maybe she was worth something after all. I'm glad to hear it, she replied, clamping the phone between her ear and shoulder, but I have no place to perceive. I don't have my own toolbox. Oh, honey, would you go back to work for me for once? Wendy said all the girls would love to see you. I'll pay good money. Adriana, you know? Nancy was silent for a while. You see, I can't go back to that salon, I can't, and I don't want to. Kelly, is she, is she interested? The woman asked. She's not here anyway, and I'm going to make sure she's not. I promise. Well, you'll come and tell me what happened. Maybe I can help. Nancy thought about going into the den of the woman who stole her man. No way in hell. I mean, the money was worth it. And if Kelly didn't do well there, Nancy replied confidently. Just for you, Nancy arrived at the hated beauty parlor at the appointed time, as promised by Adriana. Kelly was not there. Nancy wondered what influence she had. She spoke to her coworkers, explaining her sudden departure from work. Listen to the sympathetic speeches. All the girls were in complete shock at the insolence of their boss. After receiving her share of support, Nancy waited for Adriana and got to work. What's up, Red as always. Nancy, you know me. The usual. Thanks for coming for me, you're welcome. Nancy smiled warmly and began to remove the old coatings. Adriana looked at her master for a long time and finally decided to ask. So why did you quit? May I ask? Did you have some kind of problem with your boss? Nancy was silent for a while, analyzing the situation, and then thought what difference does it make? So she started telling Adriana everything that had happened to her. The woman was completely shocked. She listened to the whole story literally with her mouth open. Her eyes rounded, and her tone became lower. Are you sure about this? Do you have any proof? Nancy glanced at the client, sure, sure, 100%. Proof. Alas, no, I accidentally smashed my phone when I saw that photo. But it's definitely her, there can be no doubt. Adriana's deep in thought. If you present them to me, I can help you present you with proof that my husband is sleeping with my boss. Nancy asked uncertainly. But why? I won't say sorry yet. A little time had passed, and now Nancy's sadness was replaced by more negative feelings. She wanted revenge. She wanted to tear and throw. She wanted to grab her student by the hair and drag her all over town by it. The longing turned into real rage, the rage of a betrayed and unhappy woman. There was no way Nick could find his place. He did not understand why exactly his spouse had treated him so badly. He called all his friends, acquaintances, to each of them he went personally. Little did he know, maybe Nancy and the children were hiding somewhere with them. His heart was broken and tugged with pain. Why? Why had she left? 
Nick couldn't find a reason. Maybe I wasn't giving her enough time. He thought, maybe I'd done something wrong. There was no answer to these questions. And Nick, who didn't know what the right thing to do was, tried all the options. He stood outside his daughter's kindergarten for hours, trying to see a familiar face in the crowd. He had also idled at the main entrance to his son's school. He could not go there at all, but there was no one there. His heart was bleeding. When he thought about losing his family forever, Nick had even managed to take a trip to Nancy's hometown. Suddenly, she took the kids and went to Ramon's house. But his wife's mother-in-laws and sisters-in-law only shrugged and cried. We can't find her ourselves, they replied. Nick was tearing up and throwing up with misunderstanding. After all, if Nancy had fallen out of love with him, why was she hiding the children? If Nancy fell in love with another man, why not just say so? That fact was driving him mad. He had almost stopped sleeping deep wrinkles appeared under his eyes. His hands were shaking and his legs were tweaking. After a while Nick still had to go back to work. Clients were waiting for him more than ever. He called all his regulars, announcing that he was ready to start work again. Quite expected. The first person to see him was her. Oh my God, Nick. Kelly rushed over to the Masseuse. She theatrically shook her hands. What happened to you? Why do you look like that? She tried to hug him, but the man roughly pushed her away. The woman almost collapsed to the floor and looked at the monsieur for the first time. With a tinge of fear, what do you allow yourself? She was indignant. Piss off. Nick replied rudely. I've said 100 times that nothing will ever happen between us. And now I'm not in the mood for you. If you don't like it, get out. I don't care if you leave and never come back. Kelly was taken aback. She nervously tucked a gray strand of hair behind her ear. Her hands shook slightly. Never before had anyone dared to speak to her like that. What on earth does this boy allow himself, taking himself in hand? She replied stiffly, and you don't talk to me like that. I want to and your whole business will be shut down. Right, don't you dare talk back to me. Let's go, shouted Nick back. I don't care anymore. Kelly felt a pang of rage, but a look into his sad green eyes melted away. What a handsome devil, huh? She thought, but out loud she said softened. All right, all right, calm down. What happened there? Did you quarrel with your street? And with these words she hid behind a partition in the hole? She knew the answer perfectly well. After all, it was she who quarreled faithful spouses. The woman sent a provocative photo to her subordinate. She wanted the latter, thinking that her spouse was not faithful to her, to leave him. She thought that when the spouses separated, the monsieur would no longer be so strict and would succumb to her charms. However, Nick was still categorically conventional. What had she done wrong? Nancy left suddenly answered Nick, barely holding back tears. I don't understand what I did wrong. Why did she leave me? Why? He shouted, rather, addressing not to the client, but somewhere in the sky. I don't understand why, he repeated quietly to Nana. I wish I had a picture or a video. Then I could put Nadia in her place. Trust me, I have a lot of influence over her. Thinking about how you can get them, Nancy was stunned. I don't get it. Thought to herself, but what beauty? Adriana admired, looking at her nails. You're a clever girl. If you can't find proof, call me anyway. I'll find you new good spots. Okay, Nancy replied uncertainly and hurriedly left the salon. Why would Adriana want proof that Kelly was sleeping with Nick? Nancy couldn't understand it. In any case, she wanted some kind of revenge for the separation. And if Adriana could help with that, why not take that chance? Besides, Nancy already had a plan. She borrowed money from Adriana and used it to buy a nice tiny security camera to hang in her husband's beleaguered office. Thankfully, she still had the keys to the studio. I studied the instructions for the device. Fortunately, it was not so difficult. Early in the morning, when there were certainly no appointments, she sneaked into Nick's office. The studio was on the first floor of an ordinary apartment building, and there was no security alarm system. Set up the camera so it wouldn't be noticeable, connected it to hers. But then now all that was left to do now was wait. She knew that Kelly came to Nick for a massage every day. All day long Nancy, 
aims for nerves all over her fingernails, languished in anticipation. Late at night, unable to stand it, Nick's look was lost and pained. Nancy thought with pain in her chest, I hope he doesn't drink. She looked at her husband and realized with each new minute that she had never been able to fall out of love with him. Pull yourself together, shouted Nancy to herself, slightly hitting his own cheek with the palm of his hand. He cheated on you, cheated to the masseur, then came the clients one by one. But nothing untoward was happening there. The usual standard massage. Nancy had already had time to think. Maybe she was wrong. Maybe her husband wasn't cheating on her, and it was just some stupid misunderstanding. But then the thing she'd been waiting for happened. Kelly walked into the office. Nancy, making sure the camera not only played back, but also recorded everything on the memory card, watched with pain in her heart. It started out standard, nothing much happened. Nancy, you cranked the audio up to maximum and was horrified by what you heard. The moment Nick massaged the client, she started talking. So, you still haven't made up your mind. What kind of a homo are you? I guess I can't wait any longer, I want you. Your dumb ass left you a long time ago. Why are you still breaking? Because I only love her. Nick answered calmly, not stopping to massage her. And you disgust me. I don't know why she left me, but I never love her. Nancy's heart skipped a couple beats. Didn't he cheat on me? A new hope settled in her heart. Left ear became more than a little angry. She jumped up from the table in the middle of nowhere and started screaming. She left because I set you up, you idiot. She lamented her father's separation, covering her breasts with one hand. Remember the day you agreed to that nude photo shoot? I set you up. I set it up so your Nancy would think you were cheating on her. I sent her a picture of you so she'd think we were having an affair and dump you. She's already left you. Forget her. And with those words, Kelly threw herself into the man's arms, trying to kiss him. He jerked his whole body like an electric shock and pushed her away from him. Kelly fell awkwardly to the floor, but did not stop trying. That's when Nick finally became enraged, grabbed her under her arms, and shoved her out the door, throwing her clothes at her. We're never going to have anything. I'm sick of it. Get out of here. He shouted as the doors slammed shut in her face. Sitting at the monitor, Nancy couldn't believe what had happened. She seemed to have learned to breathe again. He didn't cheat. He didn't cheat on me gladly, she thought. Grabbing the memory card with the recording, she rushed to her husband's studio. On the way, she managed to call Adriana in time to give her the tape. Nancy wasn't sure if such proof would do the trick. But the woman assured Nancy it was even better. And taking the memory card from her, told her to wait. Nancy burst into the massage parlor and immediately threw herself at her husband's neck. I knew it. I knew you would never do this to me. She screamed with joy. That evening, the different spouses, having cleared up all the loose ends, were reunited. Nancy returned home with the children. All was well. But still, Adriana needed that video. As it turned out, Kelly had never owned a beauty parlor. She was the director of a whole chain of salons, and the real owners and founders were siblings Adriana and Leo, Kelly's husband. At the very beginning of their business together, Leo had suggested his wife Hope as director. Adriana had never really liked Nadia. They had all been friends since their college years, but Adriana had long known that Nadia was a shameless and unscrupulous woman and completely unworthy of her impecunious husband. Thanks to Nancy, Adriana managed to prove to her brother what his wife was really like. As a result, Leo divorced Hope, of course, firing her from her former position as director of beauty salons. Adriana offered Nancy to take her place, but the girl refused for fear of responsibility. Then she was offered another option. They were opening a new salon in the suburbs, and Nancy was offered to be the director of not a chain, but only one point. After consulting with her husband, Nancy agreed. So the family moved to the countryside. Of course, when Nancy became a director, she abandoned the system of fines once and for all. She recruited a good team of professionals, and soon her salon became the best of the entire chain. Nick opened a new massage parlor and quickly gained other clients. The clientele was doing even better here than downtown. 
Nancy and Nick never needed money again. And two years later, their family had another baby boy. After all that happened, the couple learned the most important thing. Never lie to each other. Always discuss what happened and trust each other as much as possible.